Today, once again, we're back reading some more MIDA whole stories, and I hope you're ready, guys. As it is every single time on here, I'm sure it's going to be unbelievable. There's been so many good new posts on here, so I'm so excited to read them. So with that being said, sit back and relax, and I hope you have a wonderful time. Am I the a for telling my son that that village you wanted doesn't exist since you burnt it to the ground? This is a bit complicated. I'm a stepmom to five wonderful kids. I became their stepmom when the oldest was nine. I adopted all of them but one, and that's Nick. He never wanted me to be his mum, which is fine. The moment he turned 18, he made it very clear that he doesn't care about me at all. I wasn't invited to his wedding or any holidays and so on if he was hosting. My last straw was when he told me that he will come to Christmas that I was hosting if I left, so we're very low contact. Along with that he's blown up every single sibling relationship he has two girls now and he called me up this was a surprise and we started talking after a while he started complaining about not getting help at all to raise his kids he asked me to watch them on sunday and step up as a grandparent i told him that the reason the village doesn't exist to raise his kids is due to him burning that village down he called me a jerk and hung up my husband is iffy on the situation but told me it's my call since i would be the one to watch the kids most of the time since he travels often for work so i'm posting here okay so so there's a lot of context missing here, of course. But from what it says here, it sounds like you're not the a-hole. They've wanted nothing to do with you, and now they're surprised that you don't want to help them. Of course you don't want to help. And like the top comment says, what has your husband been doing for the last however many years? Does he have a relationship with his son? How did y'all function before Nick turned 18? Where's Nick's mum? There's too much missing here. But based on just the information, it appears that Nick is meeting the consequences of his choices. Not the a-hole, maybe. And they respond under this comment. Husband has a low contact also but due to a different reason he didn't have a great relationship with his siblings but they tolerated each other nick's mum said that i'm out and basically gave up her rights i've never talked to her and i don't think the youngest has even talked to her i have no idea what she's up to i feel like this comment really sums this up not the a-hole he called to complain that he isn't getting help he didn't call saying that he regrets that he messed up relationships he wants something from you he doesn't want you this sucks and please prioritize yourself and the people in your life who actually care about you yeah this entire entire time it sounds like they've just been difficult for no reason am i the a for telling my parents that if they give my brother money i'll stop giving them money my female 32 brother 35 is trash he has multiple baby mamas and is a deadbeat he also is the apple of my mum's eye he can do no wrong and is just misunderstood my parents are retired and on a fixed budget i do well for myself and i help them out i give them maybe 500 bucks a month to help with groceries and bills every once in a while i give them extra for an unexpected expense no questions asked my mum asked me for two grand i sent it to her strangely enough i ran into my brother at a family wedding that i've been told he could not afford to attend because it was a destination wedding weird funny story he actually missed the wedding because he hooked up with some rando on an excursion and went to their resort it was our cousin's wedding and my aunt was pissed she had to make special arrangements to get him included on the trip since he only had the money last minute she said that my mum shouldn't have given him the money if he wasn't going to show up then she shut up after she saw the look on my face i enjoyed the wedding and i had a great time when i got home i went to see my parents i asked my mum why she had asked me for the two thousand dollars she lied and said something for the house i asked her what and she couldn't say i told her what my aunt said i told her and my father that from now on i wanted receipts for any money i gave them i said i've got no problem helping them out but i'll be damned if i'm gonna work my ass off for her to give my money to my piece of crap brother she started crying and my dad said that they weren't children and didn't answer to me i agreed and i walked out i didn't talk to them for two months my aunt called me yesterday and told me that my parents were thinking of going to the food bank since they didn't have any money i said that i'd given them two grand a couple of months ago and that was more than my family of three spent on food in that time she said i knew damn well that they'd given my money to my brother i told her that he should probably pay them back then she said that i was being a b arch am i the a-hole oh my god no not even a little bit it's a hundred percent the parents fault like do they really expect you to give them money so they can give money to your brother do they expect you to be okay with this or was this a one-off thing that isn't gonna happen again Definitely not the a-hole. And like the top comment says, OP, you're not the a-hole. Your parents are. They've created this monster and now you're supporting him. They're using you as a cash cow. Yes, it's true. They don't answer to you. But if you're footing the bill, then they damn well better tell you where the money's going. And your aunt calling you a B-arch is funny. If she cares so much about your parents, she should be footing the bill. Which I highly doubt because people are always one to talk but never to sign the check. Stand your ground and let them suffer a little so they understand. They won't die over eating some food from the food 
food bank. Yeah, not the a-hole and you gotta stop giving her money. It's totally the parents' fault. And also completely enabling your brother. Yeah, that's not your fault. Am I the a-hole for explaining to a man who refused to mind his own business? What happens in graphic detail if I drink regular cow milk in my latte? I had some tests to have run at my local hospital today. In the hospital is a coffee place. It isn't Starbucks, but it's a local place that has a few locations in my area. When I was all done with my medical stuff, I decided to treat myself to a coffee. I got in a long line behind a man that I noticed kept on muttering about something. I noticed every time someone in front of him ordered a coffee with some sort of plant milk, he would mutter louder. Finally, he was up to order. He looked around and loudly said, I want a regular drip coffee with real milk, not this frou-frou BS that everybody drinks these days. The barista rolled her eyes and got his coffee. He was standing nearby messing with his drink or something. I ordered a latte with oat milk. I was kind of waiting for him to say something, but I wasn't officially instigating because I always get oat milk. The guy looks at me and says, you know that's not milk, right? I said, yeah, I know. He then says, it won't kill you to drink regular milk, right? It's good for you. Now here's where I might be the a-hole. I said, yeah, it won't kill me, but I don't want to, oh my God, Hershey squirt all the way home. I don't want to poop myself from now until there's nothing left in my stomach. So if you don't mind, I'll take my oat milk latte and I won't poop myself, thanks. The guy threw his coffee away and left. The barista was in shock. Now I feel bad and my husband said it was kind of uncalled for, but he also laughed so hard when I told him. I get so annoyed when people decide they have some out-of-pocket thing to say to me. No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole. They 100% deserved everything you said to them. You know, like obviously it's super gross, but that's what they deserve. Like the top comment says, well, he did ask and you let him know in no uncertain terms that there are horrible stomach and intestinal symptoms. Some people need to hear it and be disgusted in order for them to leave others alone and shut their mouths. What's his problem anyway? You each get your coffee the way that you each like it and that's that. What do I give a crap if you drink oat milk? As long as you don't force me to drink it, I don't care. Not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for audibly saying bruh when my sister announced that she was pregnant again? Hello, I'm female 16, a younger sister to Laurie, 26 female. Me and Laurie have never been close since we had different dads. I was an affair baby. She always resented me for ruining her family, but whatever. Laurie has six kids. Yeah, six. Twin boys, Beck and Joe, who were seven. Planned. A girl, Liliana, who's six. Unplanned. Another girl, Angel, who's five. Planned. Another boy, Keith, who's two. Planned. Another baby boy, Cole, who's nine months. Not planned. Despite the fact that Laurie is incapable of taking care of these kids, four of them were actually planned because she knows that my pushover mum will give her money and watch the kids. My mum even quit her job to do so, even turning her workroom into a nursery for Carl. We're pretty well off, but we can't do this forever. I try not to judge and I just ignore Laurie like she does me. Even though when my mum is busy doing something like changing a diaper, I have to step in and help, especially with the twins since they're very rough with each other. Tonight at dinner, Laurie's boyfriend joined, a father to just Carl, as well as Laurie's father. This wasn't abnormal, so I didn't think anything of it until my sister said that she had exciting news. I wish she would have said something else, but I knew what she was going to say. I'm pregnant, she would say. Everyone went dead silent until I said, bruh. I didn't even mean to say it out loud, but come on. Laurie gave me a death stare and said if I wanted to say something, I should just say it. So I did. Laurie, this is your, I take a moment to count, sixth child. You know we can't keep supporting you. Without mum, you'd be on the streets and you know that. Look at mum, she's so tired. She's always taking care of your kids and so am I. I'd bet that I've changed more diapers than you have, you selfish biatch. She began to cry and ran out into her boyfriend's car. He follows her and drove. My mum then began to cry and she left to go get Carl back to bed since he woke up. It was just me and Laurie's father. He began to yell and told me that I was a brat and Laurie was a great mother. And then he stormed off. As I'm sitting here in the morning watching the boys, I'm thinking, was I too obnoxious? My mum says that a lot. I don't mean to be because of my autism, but come on. Please give me some feedback, Reddit. Am I the a-hole? No, I don't feel like it. You can't be having six kids and be expecting other people to look after them. Like how bloody irresponsible can you get? Oh, hey guys, I've had my 14th child. I'm just going to pass them off to my other family members because I can't look after them. Yeah, that's not good. And obviously nobody else was saying anything. The top comment says, not the a-hole. If it were me, I would completely stop helping watching the kids. But I can't stand when people pawn their kids off on family members. It really pisses me off since it happened to me as a kid. My parents decided to have more kids when I was 10, 14, and then again when I was 17. Guess when I moved out? 17. Yeah, and the fact that their mum quit their job so that they could look after their kids. Yeah, I don't know. It's not a nice situation, but somebody had to say something like this. Also, the thing about Am I the A-hole is half of these might not even be real, but assuming that it is, then yeah, I feel like it's not the A-hole. And yeah, it's pretty overwhelmingly 
definitely not the a-hole in the comment section. Am I the a-hole for abandoning my daughter on vacation? My wife and I have always dreamed of celebrating our 40th anniversary with a luxurious vacation. Just the two of us reliving the romance of our early years. We had it all planned out for years now and we're excited beyond words. Enter our adult daughter Jane. Jane and her husband got wind of our plans and promptly invited themselves and their two children. Oh my god, get out of here. Nine female and five male along. I originally put my foot down and I told them this trip was just for us, which upset her some. But my wife has a hard time saying no to Jane, as she's the youngest of our children and our only daughter. And she didn't want to hurt her feelings, so she reluctantly agreed to let them join. I wasn't thrilled about it at the time, but I wanted to make my family happy. And I knew my wife was okay with the idea of a family trip. Even if she was heartbroken, we wouldn't get our romantic trip. We went along with it. The place we were originally going to go was not child friendly. So we changed course and we decided on an all-inclusive family friendly resort. We paid for the resort and our grandchildren's plane tickets. Jane and her husband only had to pay their own airfare. And what, they didn't feel bad about this? Oh, I hate this so much already. Here's where things get complicated. As the vacation got closer, I started having a change of heart. I realized that our 40th anniversary was a once in a lifetime milestone and I wanted to honor it in a way that was true to our original plans. My wife and I might not be able to afford a trip like this again for quite some time and it's something we always wanted to do. So without consulting anyone, I switched our tickets last minute to go to the romantic destination that my wife and I had originally planned for. I didn't tell Jane or her husband. I didn't even tell my wife until the day before our flight left, which was the day before Jane's flight left for their vacation. It wasn't an easy decision and I feel guilty about it, but I wanted our 40th anniversary to be the special intimate celebration that we'd always hoped for. We called Jane after we landed to tell her and she was extremely upset to say the least. She seemed to have the idea that we were going to look after our grandkids so she and her husband could have alone time. And now that I abandoned her, they would have to do it all by themselves. I hung up on them when my son-in-law started shouting and my wife and I enjoyed the rest of our trip. They came back the same day that we did but haven't answered any of our texts and Jane seems to be ignoring me. My wife told me that she vastly preferred our trip to the family trip but she still doesn't like how Jane is mad at us and wants me to apologize. I'm not sure I want to after learning that Jane and her husband were using us for free babysitting and a free trip but I feel like I just need to keep the peace. Am I the a-hole for changing our trip destination last minute and leaving Jane and her family to fend for themselves? No, no, definitely not the a-hole. It's your bloody anniversary for God's sake. It's not a free holiday for them. Them. And the fact that they didn't even feel guilty about completely changing your plans that you had with your wife? No, not the a-hole. The top comment says, not the a-hole. What part of the 40th anniversary trip did your daughter and son-in-law not understand? Oh, boo freaking who? They wanted to spend time alone and designated the grandparents to babysit on what should have been their special trip. If your daughter and son-in-law wanted alone time on a trip, they could have gone on a different trip and politely asked you and your wife to watch the kids while they were away, not try and hijack your trip. Don't feel guilty OP, not even for a second. You and your wife have done the parenting of your kids and now it's time to start enjoying life as a couple again. Sure your parents and grandparents but you're still a couple and you deserve to enjoy falling in love with each other all over again with romantic trips that do not include your offspring or grandkids. Your daughter needs a swift kick of reality right in the tuchus. She had the audacity to invite her family to your romantic weekend with the express purpose of securing babysitters so that she could enjoy herself without any you thought of her parents. The entitlement is mind-boggling. Yeah, that's right, and that has 27,000 upvotes. But also, to be completely honest, it's definitely an a-hole move to do this without telling anybody. And overall, I feel like it's still not the a-hole. Like they said in the beginning of this, they invited themselves to this. It doesn't get much more a-holy than that. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my wife name our kids something stupid? Me, 25 male, and my wife, 23 female, are having our first child together. She's currently nine months pregnant and could give birth any time in the next couple of weeks. The only major fight that we've had during her pregnancy happened a couple of days ago. It was about what we were going to name our kid. It all started when we found out the gender of the baby. We didn't do a gender reveal and decided to find out the gender at one of her checkups because we didn't want to spend time making two lists of names and then having to get rid of one after. So after we found out that we were having a boy, we sat down together and we made a list. Almost all the names that she suggested were normal until one that caused me to write this post. She suggested that we name our son Mune. She told me that the name was from a movie she watched when she was younger and it always stuck with her. I told her the name was a little out there and he would get made fun of for it. She claimed that he wouldn't and we started going back and forth trying to decide whether to add the name to the list or not. Eventually she agreed to keep the name off the list. We picked some that we liked and I thought that was that. Later on in her pregnancy her mum decided to throw a baby shower as it was her first grandchild. Am 
my wife's pregnancy was almost over and we hadn't celebrated once, it was fine for the most part until we started to open the gifts. Most of them were normal baby things like diapers and bottles. Until we got to her mum's gift, my wife opened the gift bag and pulled out a blue handmade blanket. It seemed normal enough at first until my wife unfolded it and lo and behold there was the name Yoon written on the blanket. When I saw it I was pissed but I didn't want to cause a scene so I stayed quiet. After that reveal I had family members come up to me and ask me about the name and why I hadn't told them. I didn't know what to tell them as I didn't have a clue about this either and just had to embarrassingly tell my family which pissed me off even more. Once the event ended and me and my wife went home I started to question her about the name. She got defensive and told me that it was a good name and that I was overreacting about it. Oh my god what? <laughs> you're not overreacting even a little bit. Your wife doesn't get to solely choose a name if you're not happy with it. I brought up the earlier points and I told her it was a stupid name for a kid and if she wanted to name something Moon so bad she could use that name for a dog. She got upset and called her mum to come get her. After she left she called me and told me that she wouldn't be coming back for a while. Everyone I've talked to about this said I'm not the a-hole. But now that my wife has been gone and I've been thinking about it I feel like I could have handled the situation better. Am I the a-hole? So your partner wants this name that you are not interested in and when you thought that it was over and you weren't going to choose that name she's still secretly planning to use it without even telling you? Or did they just not tell their mum about it or something? You don't give somebody a blanket with their child's name on it if it isn't going to be their child's name. And this is not an overreaction. Yeah, the top comment. You are not overreacting and you're not the a-hole. Tell your wife this or better yet have her read this. Naming a baby is a two yes or one no situation. You do not name a child something that your partner does not agree with. You find a compromise. This is the start of many necessary compromises in life and it's a total a-hole move to unilaterally decide on a child's name despite your partner's misgivings. You need to put your foot down hard on this because what she's doing is 100% not okay. She's absolutely not mature enough for motherhood if she can't find a reasonable compromise on this. I'm a mum to several kids and there are names I have loved that my husband has not loved and there are names that my husband has loved and I haven't. We've always landed on a name that ended up being a great fit for our children. They might not have been our first choices but it's not about winning. It's about finding a name that you both love and will be a good fit for your child no matter what career they might have in life. And Chief Justice Mune doesn't have any weight. The only thing a name like Mune is good for is if your kid ends up like a drummer in a metal band. Yeah and like the comment under it says, she and her mum pulled a power play on you and that in itself is an a-hole move. Yeah and a huge one at that. This could be one of the most unreasonable ones I feel like we've read in a long time. Not unreasonable on this person's part but unreasonable on their wife and their wife's mum. That's unbelievable. It's your child that you have together. They don't just get to choose everything. Especially their name if you don't like it. Am I the a-hole because I told my parents to choose between living in my garage or a nursing home? I don't drive and I live in my forever house with my dogs. My kids are grown up and I'm a widow. I converted my garage into a legal guest house with everything a person needs for when the kids visit. Independent washroom, kitchen, everything. My parents have recently asked me if they can move in with me. I agreed and I talked to my kids to let them know that if they came to visit, the garage was taken so they would have to stay in the house. My parents showed up on the appointed day and the kids showed up with their families to help get them moved in. And they actually had already arranged a hotel for one family so that we wouldn't be crowded. My parents were confused as to why we were moving their stuff into the garage. I told them that was where they were staying. They said that they thought they could move into my house since I have five bedrooms. I explained that I actually have two bedrooms since one room is my office where I see clients. One is my private office and one is my hobby room. The spare bedroom is mostly for my dogs. They said they wanted to live in the house, not out in the garage like Fonzie. I said it was a take it or leave it situation. If they didn't want the garage, they could move into a nursing home or something. They're upset that they're living rent free in a private guest house that is fully up to code. Yeah, it's not a garage anymore. Yeah, you're a hundred percent not the a-hole. The top comment says, wow, your parents are spoiled. A rent free up to code apartment sounds pretty sweet. If it isn't good enough for them, they can make other arrangements. But if you let them into your main house, it'll become their house and you won't be able to get away from them. Not the a-hole. And they respond and say, I see clients in my house. It's a professional thing. I can't have my mum and dad interacting with them. Yeah, well, that's kind of the end of it then, isn't it? Why do they feel like they can just move in? I feel like that's enough of this subreddit for today, guys. That was an absolute adventure, but it's time for something wholesome. Man opens up a pub, starts taking stray kitties in and ends up with Bristol's first cat pub. Oh, what? That's so cute. Surely that would be good for business as well. Depends if you're a cat person, of course. But if you could choose between a normal pub and a cat pub, 100% the cat pub. I'm really proud of my lasagna. I think Gordon Ramsay would approve of it. And Gordon Ramsay on Twitter looks great, Natalie. 
And would you look at that? Gordon Ramsay does approve. That's so cute. My grandparents went from, we don't need a damn cat, to did you set up Lulu's spot for dinner? Oh, Lulu is so adorable. So guys, what are we having for dinner? During my interview today, I poured some water into a cup and it overflowed a little bit. Nervous, asked the interviewer. I simply replied, no, I just always give 110%. That's such a good thing to say. Hired immediately. Welcome aboard. And once again, thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you had a wonderful time. That was an adventure as it always is. A fun but also concerning adventure. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did and you want to see more Am I the A-hole, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to CatWard82. I hope you're having a great weekend, everyone. Listening to this while putting a rainbow film on my bedroom window. Hell yeah, I hope it came out amazing. And thank you for watching and commenting. I really appreciate it. But yeah, I hope the rainbow film came out cool. I've never even thought about something like that. I love reading your comments, guys. Thank you for the support. And yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for a brand new adventure and I hope to see you then. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!